Thanks very much. I'm Bruce Crowley with Grizzly Analytics. Um, and I want to start out with a question. And you'll understand by the time I get to the end, you'll see what, why I'm asking. I don't, I don't want to ask anybody's age, but how many people in the room remember when smartphones didn't have cameras? Or when phones, cell phones, didn't have cameras? Okay. When, smart, when phones first had cameras, how many people here thought, great, now I can carry one thing instead of two? How many people said, this is sort of dumb because a phone is a phone and a camera is a camera? Now, how many people said, great, now I can do Instagram? No, none of us. How many people th said, great, now my kids can share pictures of their food in the restaurant? No. The point that I want to make, and I'll get back to it at the end of the talk, is that when, when new technologies come out, we think of them in current terms. We think of a camera as you take pictures and then develop the film, or you take pictures of something, and you don't think about where it could go later. A camera and a phone, as far as I remember it, was great, now I can use this thing I'm carrying with me and take more pictures. But the implications of putting a camera together with internet connectivity, together with apps that hadn't been invented yet at the time, was something no one could possibly have thought of, and yet that's where the real transformation came. And I think that it's worth keeping our eye on that idea as we think about indoor location and geo-IoT. Now, so um, with that in mind, I'm gonna talk about a couple of different trends coming in the industry, and you'll see where I'm going, and that, I'll come back to that thought at the end. Um, the trends are growth, maturation, consolidation, and integration. And I'm gonna try to go quick through it, quick through this, because I know this is the end of the day. Uh, or maybe not the end of the day, but it's been a long day. Um, the growth, I think I don't even have to put this slide up because everybody who's here knows the growth that we've had in the whole indoor location arena. From going from a dozen companies to a hundreds of companies, a hundred companies to hundreds of companies, and there now are certainly oh, well over 200 companies working in the indoor location area. We also have a growth in the technology areas that are being used. So, whereas the, you know, going back a couple of years, people would have said, okay, there's Wi-Fi, and then there was Bluetooth, and that, that was it. Now we're seeing whole new areas of technology still coming out, such as LED lighting, which uh, has been talked about for five, six, seven years at least, and more, but in the past year through acquisitions is now coming to market through the top lighting makers, through Acuity, through Philips, through a lot of the top lighting people. We have magnetic fields, which is popularized by Indoor Atlas, but used by a number of different companies. Um, we have ultrasonic sound, which was talked about for a long time, and in this past year's Mobile World Congress, there were three or four companies demoing it very, with very effective demos and good, good results. Going over onto the hardware side, UWB has been around, but now has been truly getting out to market in the past while. But there's also very long frequency, infrared, and you have a lot of other technologies coming to play. And there are still new technologies coming out. This kind of growth area, what I think is what we're seeing is that it's not that one is gonna replace the other, but it's that every one of these technologies will have different benefits that will be useful and valuable for different use cases. And that's the important thing to keep in mind. It's not a question of one will win, it's a question of what's best for you given what you need. The other aspect of the maturity of a market, which usually is, is the following. Four or five years ago, one company would have to do it all. The company that did indoor positioning would also make the beacons, and they would also do the apps, and they would also deal with the customers, and they would also do the advertising if you had advertising. What we're seeing recently, really in the past year, I would say, is that the industry is splitting up into layers, which is what every industry does. But what it means is it's becoming a more mature industry. So we have many companies now who are working on the integration level and the solution level and actually going out and what do they do? They're really good at going out and dealing with customers and getting into a location, into sites. They may not have even developed the core technology, 
They don't have to. They can buy it from somebody else. And they can do what they do well, and that is to deliver solutions. On the other hand, the people that are developing the technology don't have to spend their time doing something they don't do as well, delivering the end solutions. They can focus on delivering the core technology. Not every, there are still going to be some companies who will try to do, do all of these, and they may do very well, but the idea of the industry splitting into these layers is a sign of maturity, because the same people that make your operating system don't make your computer and don't deliver it into your office anymore. These are all different things, and the sign of a maturity of an industry is that if you want to have a solution for your enterprise, you can find somebody that is good at delivering solutions for an enterprise, and they'll go and find the core technologies that have to be used underneath. Lastly, we're seeing a maturation of the industry in terms of the metrics. And I put this last because even though I think it's in some sense the most exciting, because we can say now we can be very accurate, we can be very fast, and we can have a much bigger range between, you know, between beacons and the, and the devices being tracked. It's, it's techie, it's exciting, but a lot, in a lot of cases, this is the case, this is not necessarily all that it takes to get the technology out into the industry, but it really does matter, sometimes. One of the biggest uh, metric people talk about is accuracy. If you have a supermarket, a solution with five meter accuracy means that you won't know if you're on aisle five or aisle six. If you have, but if you have two meter accuracy, you can, you know what aisle you're on. Now, do you care whether your users know whether they're standing in front of the pretzels or in front of the potato chips? Maybe. If so, you might need half meter accuracy. But most applications out there don't. So the retail industry, something like two meter accuracy is roughly seen as the, the standard for what you want to be able to achieve. On the other hand, if you're building technology into a drone, and you want the drone to know where it is so it doesn't fly into walls, two meter accuracy means your drone will try to go through that door and will hit the wall. So different use cases, different application areas are gonna require different metrics and different uh, accuracy levels and all these things. And the most important thing as, you, as in deploying technology is to know what matters and what doesn't matter for any particular application. Um, lastly, I, I can't not stand up and talk about the number of much bigger companies getting involved in indoor location space. When you're talking about, you have, two weeks ago, Google made an announcement about the use of Tango technology in Google Maps. Um, now, to be honest, Google also announced indoor location maps about five years ago, so we won't go there. Um, but they, they're announcing it again. Apple announced at WWDC just a few days ago about their an additional work they're doing in the indoor location space. They also have acquired four different companies in the indoor location space within the past two, three years. We have Cisco, Aruba, who's been represented here a lot with acquisitions, Bosch, LG entering the area. All these companies are huge companies, and many of them are buying startups in the area, and many of them are developing their own technology, but they're getting in in a big way, and they're giving a, giving a lot of muscle behind the whole industry. Um, last, I'm not gonna say a lot about this, but I think there is, we're seeing a consolidation of what used to be fairly different areas, the IoT area for location, which is generally called RTLS, and the mobile area, which we call indoor location, I think we're seeing them come together. I think this conference is proof of that. And um, I think a more and more technologies are able to support both. You've got devices that can support both smartphone applications and asset tracking or tag tracking technologies. Um, I think that's another consolidation area that we're seeing. Um, what I meant by this, but I think I'll just hurry through it, is that a lot of different industries are also getting involved. It's not just device makers, it's also electronics makers. It's also lighting companies. Who would have thought that lighting companies would be involved in indoor location a couple years ago? But now it's the hottest area and they're all involved in it. Networking companies have been for a long time. So it's something that span our industry is spanning industries here. Um, now we're getting back into the idea of integration, which is where I started. Why is it, what, what does it mean that a camera and a phone come together and enable Instagram? What it means is that once you have 
a technology out there, it can be integrated into a lot of other things. Indoor location technology, people think about maps. People think about, just like Waze can tell me how to get from home to office, can my smartphone tell me how to get from the door to the supermarket to find my way over to the, to the beer. But a lot of things that we're seeing now is location technology actually integrating into other devices or into other application areas. So it's most notable in the industrial area, in the hardware-based area, where here's an, here's an example where a factory put in uh, location tracking to, to track drills. And the, uh, the original reason was they wanted to be able to find the drills whenever they needed to use them, because people were using a drill and leaving it somewhere, and then the next guy would have to spend 20 minutes finding the drill, and it would slow down production. What they found, however, is that once you have the drills being located, you can actually tell somebody, you know what, the background, is, sorry, the background is apparently in manufacturing there are a lot of missed drillings. People drill in the wrong place. Every one of those costs thousands of dollars to repair and replace the thing being drilled. So, let's say you know that the drill is a couple of inches away from where it should be. And, it really sh and if you drill there, that's a missed drill. Maybe you can disable the drill until the guy moves it over or even changes the orientation. And once you have the location, you can actually solve another problem that you have, which is enable the drill only when it's in the right place. And that way you won't have mistakes going on. Here's an example where location technology is enabling robot carts. Here's an example where the, the location tracking here is tracking where the person is scanning the boxes as they go through a warehouse there, but it's also feeding that information into a video system so that if somebody sends a package with this, with this uh, uh, mail, mail carrier and, they, and the package gets broken, the company can go on a computer and can say, this package was on this video at, point, at 2 minutes 22 seconds and we can see what shape it was in. So they're integrating the location technology into their video system that tracks the, the state of the package for insurance claims. Here's an example where the person down here that's hard to see a little bit is painting something. And one of the big things they have in these fact a lot of these factories is what are called overspray fans. Fans at the top that blow away the paint so that you don't get paint all over everything. So what they're doing is they're having the fans move along with the person. As the painter moves, the fan moves also. So the loca again, the location technology is being not only a separate app, it's being integrated into the, the system. What we're seeing here is an example of, this is a, a bit of a silly example, it's a, a demo, demo from Intel from CES, where they had a rap star playing music with his hands by doing location tracking of the bracelet, of the wristlets that were on his hands right here. And because they were able to track the locations of his hands very precisely, they were able to have him air drum and actually come out with the exact sound of the music that he was making. Here's an example of a robot camera. This camera tracks the location of a kid on a bike or somebody playing, doing gymnastics or a swimmer, and the robot tracks along with the person automatically, a robot camera tracking based on location, so that if you want to get, it's, it's the ultimate selfie perhaps, it's a selfie video robot, where if you want to get a video of your kid doing gymnastics and you don't want to be responsible for holding the camera, or if you don't want to be there, then you can actually just put the robot ca video camera right there and get the perfect video without having to do it yourself. Here's another one, it's a remote control where if you take a remote control in your hand and you point it at your thermostat, it'll show you a screen for a thermostat and it will adjust your temperature. If you point it over here at your TV screen, it will show you a uh, remote control screen for your TV and it will let you change your channel. The single remote control knows where it's held, knows the orientation, and knows where it's being pointed, and because of that is able to give you full universal remote control, customized without you having to say whether you want to change your TV channel or the temperature of your heating. Again, location technology, essentially the ghost going into the machine. The location technology going into the device, and it's not there as a location technology, it's there to make the device work. It's, an, it's a robot example of a supermarket robot being developed in, in China, I believe. Um, a drone that can track your location, that's 
fairly common these days, but to have automatic tracking of your location so the drone can know where to go to fly alongside you. Now, until now I've been talking about hardware applications, but this integration idea is also true in a software level. Um, if you consider what PayPal is doing, where they're deploying beacons in stores where PayPal wants to make payments, not as a location technology, but in order to make the PayPal payments work more securely and more automatically to know exactly where you are so that the payments will go more smoothly. The location technology is disappearing into the app. People may not even know it's happening, but your PayPal app will be able to, when, when, this, gets, when this is rolled out, would know much more clearly where you are and what it is you want to buy, what you've ordered perhaps in advance. This is also being done for credit card security, by the way. So if your credit card is being used at a, at a restaurant in Brussels and you're sitting in a store in Antwerp because you went over there for the day, then you're, you're, the system can say, wait a minute, there's a problem here. This might be credit card fraud, call the person and check. The obvious next steps, I believe, are that this indoor location technology will enter everything else. Imagine social network location tagging, not only knowing what building you're in, but which coffee shop in the mall you're in. That's, I mean, for, for people with the amount of grade that I have, that may not matter so much, but for our kids, that'll be, that'll be great. Imagine finding your friends in a mall, knowing that your friend is over there in, in, in Pete's when you're at Starbucks, or whatever the case may be. Messaging groups, knowing that you can send a message to all your friends who are in the mall, not all your friends who are somewhere else. The social networking implications are very high, and again, people may not even realize it involves location technology because the location technology will have integrated into the into the systems. Now, do I all these? Do, do I see these trends necessarily happening this year? Not necessarily. The early trends that I talked about are happening already. The integration at the hardware devices is also already happening. I think the integration into the Social networking and all that will take another year or so, to be honest. But I think the trends are moving in that direction, and I think Apple's and Google's recent announcements related to indoor location really show that this is an area that's going in a lot of different directions. And I think that we're going to start to see a lot of uses of technology that are not even being thought of as uses of location technology. Um, so all these areas, the real question that people are asking constantly these days is why has an indoor location taken off in the market even more than, than, people, than, than it has? For years, everybody stands up and everyone says, this will be the year. Well, 2015 wasn't the year that it really took off and hit the masses. 2016 was also not yet the year that, it, that indoor location technology really hit the mass market. We've had a lot of trials, we've had a lot of deployments in particular areas but it's not yet the case that everybody who goes into a shopping center thinks to take out their phone for an indoor location app. But I believe that all of these trends, the growth, the improvement in the metrics, but also the maturation of the market and the consolidation into, into a, of, of multiple players working toward the same goals and finally the integration will really be the sign that I think really in the upcoming year we'll really start to see many, many more deployments, reaching commercial scale, and many more mass scale deployments of the technology. I can't finish without a uh, shameless self-plug. Tomorrow we're gonna to be running the indoor location test bed here at the conference, and I invite, and we're gonna be testing out look six or seven solutions on how they do. The key aspect of this test bed is that, like I mentioned a minute ago about the different metrics for indoor location, we're not just measuring the accuracy, we're also measuring setup, we're also measuring consistency, we're also measuring the, the real-time versus stable, stabilized accuracy. We're measuring a lot of different metrics and we're coming out with a report that you can buy in advance or buy when it comes out to explain how the solutions did in all these different metrics. Thanks very much. <laughs>